say that this is hard, this talking to the camera thing is hard, I probably say it every video. I'm sorry, not sorry, but you just need to know your friend, okay? Alright, so I should have had my glasses on the whole time. Should I do it again? Friend, it's Serena. Alright, let's talk about history. So I've been trying to sit down and share a bit of how I am going to approach our studies or organizing our purpose-driven unschool and I've kind of been breaking it up by subject even though I kind of don't want to do that <laughs> I don't want to break our learning up by subject I think that's one of the um, the um, ideas behind unschool is that life is so beautifully inter life and lessons are so beautifully intertwined with one another does intertwined mean one another i don't know you know what i'm trying to say so <laughs> what i want to try to do is um get the kids to see that math is all around them you know science is all around them history is all around them basically to get them to see life as they saw it before i started or people started or I started to separate things into subjects and so I feel like the best way for us to do that um, or to approach it and for me at least to organize it is um, to translate subjects into jobs um, and when I say jobs or work um, to me it's like the ultimate extension of pretend play so we talked a little bit about language arts and how in my mind that makes sense um, to teach them to be journalists um, and if you haven't seen that video just you can check it out I'll leave the link in the description and up in the card somewhere but I wanted to take that same theme um, this journey for us is about learning to work at things with all of our heart um, we personally want to learn to work at things with all of our heart as unto the Lord and not unto people. So the idea of work and understanding of what it means to work is something that I'm really trying to get across to them. And so having each of the subjects kind of translated into a job, uh, to me, just really like amps up pretend play and helps them to see it um, as not just stuffed inside of a box. So, with language arts, we're journalists. And with history, we're time travelers. <laughs> I thought this was perfect, okay? First of all, it's probably nothing new, the idea of it, but I still got excited nonetheless. But a lot of the historical fiction, a lot of the um, books that are loosely based in history has two characters that are journeying back through time and so I thought that that would be a really really cool thing um, for them or a cool way or a lens to see history through so as they study different historical time periods or figures um, they would be able to travel back into time and really immerse themselves uh, by researching um, and studying those different time periods and those different people, if that makes any sense. So the first thing I'm going to start with is a timeline because classic timeline is perfect for history. And I just want to have a basic timeline that they can upload to their devices and be able to add any pictures and words and so whatever that they have completed as a part of their own individual studies. The fun part, of course, is going to be visiting places that are rich in history, but also using all of our costumes and our pretend play things to really play up the idea of being a time traveler. I even thought about planting this little seed, this little idea into their minds about creating a time travel booth. That would be so much fun. <laughs> I don't know if that's actually going to happen or not, but I think that if I run that past Cameron, he would be game. And that would be the first thing that we do as we move into this whole history study and time traveling. So, of course, I have our costumes. We've got all the costumes, some medieval costumes, just anything that I can find to make it a bit more fun, but rather less focused on any resource, if that makes any sense, or a curriculum, if that makes any sense. So, of course, I'm still 
going to use my books. Our Who Was books are a huge hit in our homeschool, so they're going to continue along with these. And then I also have our Everything You Need to Ace World History and American History, and we really enjoy these. I like these because it's just a nice overview that gives me a good little start to go and just jump in and pick out more resources so that we can research and find truth on our own. Um, I also still have my history uh, curriculum from the good and the beautiful that I will use to do the same type of thing. Um, so as they have questions and as we travel to certain places that provide that small seed and potential direction for study, we'll just document and see where it leads us. Of course, I'm a huge fan of using picture books, especially for a soft introduction. So whether it is science history or or American history, I love using picture books to be able to um, jump in and give them a brief introduction to see if it sparks any of their interest. I happen to really love this one. Gordon Parks, How the Photographer Captured Black and White America. This book is really good in the illustration. So yummy. This book is beautiful and I would highly suggest it. Yeah, so that is my main plan. I'm trying to think what else. Oh, there was one more thing. I picked up this the story of my life book. Actually, I didn't pick it up. Well, I did pick it up, but I picked it up from my in-love's house. <laughs> So um, this, I think my father in love had purchased this book to be able to complete some of its pages by asking um, Brian's grandmother questions about her life. And I thought that some of the contents would help to spark ideas and help me to give leading questions that I can ask as they move along in their research and their studies. I just want to be able to be there to support them, to be fully engaged with them, but to be able to document and pay attention to the things that spark each one of their interests and help them to move down um, those individual lanes or roads or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So I'll be using this as well. So we're just going to be creating our own timeline. There is one more thing <laughs> that I have kind of sort of planned for the beginning of our homeschool, unschool studies. And that is a project that I'm very excited about, which is creating a family tree. So I'm going to go all the way back to scrapbooking days and uh, we're going to be getting a scrapbook and um, using our Polaroid and tucking into our live and learn tour adventures um, hopefully trips to visit family members um, whether it be grandparents aunts and uncles cousins um, distant family members family members we are meeting for the first time to be able to meet them along the way and just sit and spend quality time and ask questions and add those things into our book of memories in our family tree to me sounds like the best project ever. So uh, that is the one project that I have planned for um, our history or our time traveler studies. Don't you think that's so cute? Just being able to grab any old photographs that they have and include it copies of them in our book to be able to use our Polaroid and take present day pictures with them and add that to our book. I'm very excited about it. <laughs> so hopefully at the end of this adventure we'll be able to walk away with a beautiful book of family memories and um, our own research of our family tree. That is kind of it. Like I hope I was in focus. That is what I have on my heart to begin with um, as far as organizing our history studies um, for the kids. They will become official time travelers and we're just going to keep this pretend play thing rolling. So I'm very excited. I think it's a really good um, way to move with intention as far as documenting their history studies along the way. So I'm working my way through the subject, slowly transforming them from subject specific into areas of play and work and exploration, if that makes any sense. Um, and it's making me very excited. <laughs> okay. Remember, life is so very full of lessons and we are so excited to live and to learn. Bye. Mm -mm. 
I think the kids have stayed quiet for a good amount of time and Brian didn't open the microwave <laughs> or shut the door and make way too much noise <laughs> or cough. There he goes. You okay, babe? Yeah. All right. Let the unschool organizing continue. Thanks for watching.